Hi everyone. For this video, I'll be covering Vision Transformer, where the authors applied the Transformer network for image classification. We'll understand Vision Transformer in three parts. First, we'll cover the patch embedding block. Then, we'll dive deep into the attention mechanism, trying to cover every detail of it and implement that. Finally, we'll see how to build the entire Transformer network and see some visualizations after training it on a toy dataset. Ever since the seminal paper of attention was released, Transformer has been applied to different fields and in Vision, the number of research works using some variant of VIT has significantly increased. And even though many different flavors of applying Transformers to images exist, VIT still is the one which is used more commonly. Which is why with this video, I'll cover every part of it. But before that, if you are gaining anything from these videos and this channel, do subscribe to it. So our goal for this video would be to understand and implement all parts of VIT with the final objective of building a model that takes in an image and generates some sort of classification scores from it. Now the transformer model requires inputs to be in the sequential format. But what we have here is a three channel image. So we need to find a way to convert this image into a sequence of tokens. The module that takes up this responsibility is the patch embedding module which essentially converts the image into a sequence of patches. Let's assume our image to be of width W and height H. And for now, we'll divide our image into patches of height H by 2 and width W by 2, essentially giving us four patches. Then instead of taking these patches as some form of a 2D grid, we'll take them in the sequence moving across columns and rows to get a sequential output of size 4. However, we are not done yet. All the layers of transformer operate on the same dimension and the inputs are required to be of the shape n cross t where n is the sequence of tokens which in our case is the sequence of patches and d is the transformer dimension. So our input to the transformer layers needs to be 4 cross t but what we have here is a sequence of 3 channel images each being h by 2 cross w by 2. VIT simply flattens this entire 3 channel image pixels to one vector. So for this patch that vector will have the RGB values for the first pixel then second, and so on till the last of the HW by 4 pixels. Doing this for all four patches will give us an input of the shape with the first dimension being 4 and the second being 3 times the patch height times the patch width. Then we feed this to an FC layer which converts each of those n patch representations to an output dimension of D. So up till now, we have taken the RGB information of the patches and converted each patch to a D dimension vector since that is what our transformer requires. But these patch representations do not hold any positional information. And unlike RNNs, Transformer is not going to handle the sequence in a series of time steps. Rather, it will process all the patches together in parallel. Hence, we would want to inject this positional information into the patch representation as well. Although a representation that is 2D aware might seem essential to teach the Transformer model regarding the positions in a row column format, but the authors find that using 1D learnable position embedding is good enough. So essentially for our case of four patches, it would be an embedding space consisting of four vectors representing positions one to four. And the model would learn how to best represent these positions through the training process. The authors also add a CLS token at the position zero. The CLS token is just meant to be a representation of the entire image and it's this guy's representation that will ultimately be used to determine the classification scores. Then the patch embedding block takes the patch representations along with the CLS token representation and adds in the positional information. And finally returns this sequence of features to be used as input to the transformer layers. So to summarize, the patch embedding module will perform three responsibilities. First, convert the image into a sequence of patches. Second, add CLS token to the sequence. And third, add positional information to each member of this sequence. We had kept our number of patches to be 4 for easy visualization, but in an actual implementation, we'll be working with images of size 2 to 4 cross 2 to 4, and our patches will be 16 cross 16. So then we'll have a sequence of 196 patches. So let's see how an implementation of this patch embedding block would look like. So this is the code for our patch embedding module, and it's going to go over the three things that I've already mentioned. During initialization, we look up fields from the config, which will be necessary to cook up our layers. And for making things in the implementation concrete, 
we can assume images will be of 3 cross 2 to 4 cross 2 to 4 and the patch size to be 16 cross 16. So from the config, we'll be taking in image height, width, channels, uh, EMB underscore dim is the transformer dimension. And for regularization, we'll also put in a dropout. And this field simply tells us the dropout probability for the patch embedding block. The patch height and width are also taken from the config. So the first thing we do is figure out the number of patches. Uh, this would be necessary to initialize the positional embedding. This will be our image height divided by the patch height and image width divided by the patch width. And then we'll be multiplying those two together. The patch dimension, which is what we get when we flatten the pixels of a patch will be this. And we create our linear projection from the patch dimension to the transformer dimension here. So one could also do this projection via a convolutional layer with the kernel size being the patch height and the width and stripes also being the same. And you will see that the weight matrix for the kernel would actually have the same dimension as that of this FC layer. Pause underscore embed is our position vector. You can also initialize this as random numbers rather than zero or even use an dot embedding either way works. The dimension will be one more than the number of patches because we need to bring in the CLS token as well at position zero which we initialized next. And it also has the same dimension as the output of patch FC layer above, which again is the same transformer layer dimension. And lastly, we'll initialize our dropout. In the forward call, the first part is converting the patch to the sequence of patches. So this rearrange method is from enops, which enables us to do this in a much more cleaner manner. Here our input is our images, which is B cross C cross H cross W. And the height of the image will be equal to the product of the number of divisions we'll be making across the height dimension times the patch height and same for the width. And then I'll bring in the number of patches along width and height together and push in the patch height, width and channels as the last dimension. And after that, I can use my linear layer to project this to D dimension as the input dimension of the linear layer was this product of channels times patch height times patch width. This is where we'll be adding the CLS token. I use repeat to ensure that its shape is such that we can add this and the patch representations together. I add CLS to my already existing sequence and at last add positional information and also put in a dropout before returning the output as the patch embedding representations. So to reiterate, just three things that I'm doing here, project patch features to transformer dimension, add CLS token to patch sequence, and finally add positional information. So that brings us to the end of the implementation of patch embedding block, as well as the first part of vision transformer. In the next part, which will be in the next video, we'll look into the need and intuition of attention and understand the entire attention block of transformer and see how that would be implemented. So see you in the next video.